Hello and welcome to another pen video from me, Penultimate Dave. So I have here another 10 pens currently inked for this week. I think let's go through these briefly one by one. We'll go through them in a little bit more detail and then we'll do a writing sample. So from left to right, we have the we have a Visconti Brunelleschi, we have a Visconti Uffizi, we have a Visconti Millionaire, we have a Visconti Medici Il Magnifico in the red marble, a Visconti Medici Il Magnifico in the lapis lazuli, we have a Classic Pens LB5 in the Calsecchi, we have a Onoto, and this is a Magna Classic in the chased green, we have a Opus 88 Demonstrator with a bit of a twist, and I'll show you that in a moment. We have a Yardo Lead, and this is the Grand Viceroy in the Victorian. And we have a Yardo Lead, Grand Viceroy in the Barley Corn or Barley. So I think let's take a look at these pens in a little bit more detail. So this is the uh, Visconti, this is the Brunelleschi. So this is made out of terracotta tile uh, mixed with resin. And you get this lovely, like, rubbery texture to the pen. Uh, it's a matte finished pen because of that. But I have to say that I do like this pen a lot. I love the sort of rose gold. Uh, is, is it rose gold? Maybe not rose gold. But it's uh, more of a, a, a lovely sort of tarnished gold coloring on uh, the pen here i think it it matches the uh, aesthetics of the pen quite nicely now this is a faceted pen from visconti it is a power vac filler uh, it's a single reservoir you do have the hook safe lock mechanism and you have the older 23 cap palladium nib there from visconti now you can post the cap uh, some of the earlier versions of this, this is the generic uh, release version. There was, I think, either a 50 or 100 limited edition run for the Fountain Pen Network prior to that. A lot of those versions, because it was the first version of the pen, had the terracotta where the cap would crack. I typically don't post the cap normally because of that. Uh, the cap is uh, quite thin, so... I could see why perhaps that might crack a little bit there, uh, but I I do not normally post my caps, and I don't post uh, this cap on this pen normally either. But that is another pen that I have inked up uh, this week. I had it inked up last week as well. The next pen is uh, the Visconti Uffizi, and I am trying to get through using this pen. Uh, I have changed the ink in this now uh, to a different color ink. Uh, this is a beautiful silver overlay. I've polished the silver here. There is a little bit of pitting going on on that clip that you might be able to see there and on the underneath of that clip. Uh, the celluloid does seem to react a little bit with uh, the metal on the kill clip here. Uh, but it's still, it's a beautiful pen. It is a celluloid material, a lovely uh, green celluloid. It is a Pavac filling pen as well. Uh, this is a sterling silver uh, AG925 overlay there. This is number 432 that you can see there. Um, this really is a beautiful, beautiful overlay. Uh, it actually comes, uh, it's quite a long pen actually, a very long section and threads. Comes with a longer, almost uh, sort of cone-like uh, nib here and this is uh, the uh, Visconti older 18 karat gold nib uh, writes very very well uh, I have to say it is a broad nib as well um, I uh, didn't get a chance on choosing the nib I just saw that this pen was available and I decided to buy it and this was a number of years ago I think around 2017 maybe possibly 2018 but uh, yeah it was a uh, a pen I decided to buy at the time. I was into overlays. This pen didn't really strike uh, a buy me with me, but I decided uh, it was a fairly good price that I would buy it anyway. 
the next pen is the Visconti Millionaire, and this is in the marble green. Um, it's a beautiful pen. It's a heavy pen. It's made out of solid marble, so it's not a light pen. Uh, the the marble um, is fairly thick, but you can just feel the weight of the cap. It really, really is quite weighty. Uh, the body there, uh, you do have a uh, number six size Visconti nib. It's the older 23 cap palladium medium nibs. And you will see here, uh, you've got metal on metal threads uh, and it squeaks a little bit, but you do have a push pull converter, a piston there. Uh, but that does squeak a little bit when you try to uh, um, basically unscrew the section or the body. You can post the cap on this one, but it doesn't post. Uh, it posts securely, I guess. It's not going to come off, but it doesn't post deeply. So I'm always worried about that. And again, I don't normally post my caps. So again, it's just a, a pen that I don't uh, post. But I do know a few people that have that pen and they do post the cap and they do enjoy posting it. The next pen here is a, a Visconti Medici Il Magnifico in the red marble, uh, beautiful pen, solid silver, again, solid marble uh, in terms of the body, uh, very weighty pen, a beautiful pen, uh, and I uh, do love this a lot. Uh, this has a, a number six size Visconti 23 cap palladium nib there, uh, but this is a really, really nice uh, pen. Uh, you can, again, post the caps, it will post deeply and securely. I don't post these caps. Uh, I did have a problem with the uh, hook safe lock mechanism. The plastic bored through on the inside of the cap. So I had to send that away in 21 to Visconti. They repaired it uh, free of charge. But it's just something I'm more mindful of. So again, typically, you've got to be careful when posting your caps. You can do damage to the caps. I have seen people that have come away with cracked caps before um, because, again, it, it's the pressure on the cap uh, trying to post it on the back of a pen. The next pen here I have inked up this week is the Visconti Medici Il Magnifico in the Lapis Lazuli. Again, it's a Lapis Lazuli stone uh, marble, essentially, so that is heavy, but the heaviness really is this solid silver cap section and power vac knob. Uh, it's a gold vermeil, so uh, a yellow gold. So it's a gold plating essentially over silver. And uh, you can see there again, it's got a number six size of Visconti nib. It's a newer 18 cat gold nib from Visconti. Uh, but you can see that there, it's a, a medium nib. Uh, but again, like, that is a really, really uh, nice pen to be writing with. So I have that one inked up with me uh, today as well. The next pen here is uh, the Classic Pens LB5. And this is in the KN that you'll see there. It says, uh, where is it? KN there. Um, and this is number 38 of 50. So only uh, 50 of these in this color made. A beautiful diffusion bonded acrylic where they literally just take layers and layers and layers of acrylic sheet, press it together under immense pressure to uh, fusion and bond that acrylic sheets into one. Uh, this is made by Sailor, so it does have a Sailor King of Pen nib there, and this is a 21 cat gold nib, as all Sailor King of Pen nibs are. It's a cartridge converter as well. Uh, I can post the cap if I want to. It posts very deeply, very securely, like most sailors do. I think sailors typically have really done their homework uh, in terms of making sure their pens are perfect. And I guess this is why I like the uh, Sailor um, uh, made classic pen LV5 because it just is a perfect pen in, in every way. The next pen I have inked up here today is... And a noto, it's the Magna Classic in the chased green or jade. Uh, beautiful material, uh, silver uh, clip, uh, which uh, I can actually. I've got a, 
a uh, silver polishing cloth so I can actually polish that up and have it look a lot more shiny there you go and likewise probably the uh, Anoto uh, coin finial uh, there or medallion there as well uh, a beautiful pen. I'm not, to be honest, a fan. I don't mind the Anoto the pen made in England stamp there. I kind of wish it wasn't, but I really am not a fan of having a blank engraving slot there. Uh, I, I think if somebody wants a pen engraved, they should actually be commissioning a pen uh, and not actually just a run-of-the-mill pen. But I, I understand why Anoto have done it. Uh, I do like the tracing on this. It's a beautiful tracing on this. This pearl green, absolutely stunning. I think it really adds a lot of flair to this pen. And uh, this comes in uh, a uh, Anoto number no. seven size 18 cat gold nib. It's a medium nib. Uh, and also, it is a, uh, if I unscrew this, it is a cartridge converter. But you can see there that that ink is running quite low. So I will probably have to ink this one up very shortly as well. Uh, but this is a, a lovely pen. Maybe I will change the ink when I ink that one back up. Now, the next pen inked up is a, an Opus 88 Calaro Demonstrator. Now, I have shown this several years ago. I believe it must have been several years ago now. Um, and I kind of actually left the ink in here dry out. Uh, all of the water had evaporated. So I've just reconstituted this by adding some water to that ink. Uh, and it's actually, I think it, it's reconstituted quite nicely. This is an eyedropper pen, so you see the ink sloshing around there. But I did say that there's an added twist to this pen. And the added twist is that although it is a, a Yovo uh, number six size nib, I don't know if you can see there, uh, if you look at the tip of that nib, I actually ground this one on one of my videos into a Naganata Togi style nib, basically an architect nib. So this is a, an architect nib, and I have to say I don't write with it that often, but I decided uh, I would uh, crank open the pen, uh, refill or reconstitute the ink that was dried, uh, put some water in there, uh, write with it a little bit before maybe flushing it out so uh, i decided i would do that for this week as well the next pen uh, is a pen i added this year to my collection it's a yard of lead it's a grand victorian and i absolutely love this pen uh, i didn't buy it brand new i bought it second hand but that doesn't bother me uh, it was uh i want to say lovingly used uh, it probably wasn't because it was sold by a second-hand user to a uh, pen seller who uh, hadn't actually replaced the ink cartridge that had dried out in it. But um, I, I'd say that there are no uh, dings on it. The, the pen is quite nice. There may be a few little scratches here and there from wear and tear, but um, it, it's a push-click uh, uh, cap. Uh, solid silver. It's got a number six size uh, yard of lead nib. There's a bit of nib creep there. It's a fine nib. Uh, these are cartridge converters. It didn't come with the original converter. Just came with a cartridge, small cartridge inserted. So luckily, I've got some spare cartridges, so uh, that didn't bother me. So I've got uh, that one inked up with me this week as well. And then the final pen, again, is another Yarda Lead Grande Viceroy. And this is the Barley Corn, or Barley for short. Uh, again, solid silver pen from Yarda Lead. Uh, beautiful pen. It's got this lovely uh, barley kind of uh, pattern going on there. Uh, really, really nice. Again, another push-to-click cap. And again, another... Uh, number six size yarda lead nib this is a medium nib in this one and if i unscrew uh, this did actually come with the original green converter from yardo lead uh, i might actually get an original green converter for uh, the other yarda lead as well um, 
they're not easy to actually buy. I could probably buy one maybe from Yard of Lead, um, but to be honest, you don't see it that often. So uh, it doesn't bother me um, on, on the other pen that it's just a standard international converter. So I have that one inked up with me this week as well. So I think with that, let's go and do a writing sample. So the first pen here is the Visconti Brunelleschi. So I think we do uh, an ink swatch. And uh, this is, I think, a, an almost perfect color ink to match with the pen. Uh, I never inked this pen up with this color before uh, now or before last week, I think it was. Uh, I typically would use a, a much darker ink, but this is the Visconti Brunelleschi. And the reason why is that I would find that this would be a dry writing ink. Uh, now, this is a medium and it is a uh, 23 cap palladium nib. And then the ink in here is a uh, diamine terracotta but that is quite a uh, nice color ink which i do think complements the color of that pen the next pen is the visconti euphysi so we'll do an ink swatch here and i have actually changed the ink in this pen uh i've been trying to find the right ink for this and i think i have now found it so this is the Visconti Euphysi, and it is a broad, it's the older 18 cat gold nib from Visconti. And the ink in here is uh, Rora and Klinger, and it is Verdura, which is a very nice green colored ink. And I have to say, I thought I had two bottles of Verdura. I think I may only have one. I'm just looking at my ink wall and I don't see the other bottle. So I might have to actually get a second bottle of this because I do like that color of green a lot. The next pen is the Visconti Millionaire. So we'll do an ink swatch and this is a medium. It's a 23 cap palladium nib, but it honestly writes more like a broad. And I think this is why I actually liked a lot of the Visconti's uh, earlier on. So this is the Visconti Millionaire. And uh, it is a 20, actually it's a, uh, I'm put 23 cap here. It's actually a um, medium uh, 23 cap palladium nib. And then the ink in here is, uh, again, uh, Aurora and Klinger. And it is Alt Bordeaux, uh, which is a very nice ink. It's supposed to be a really dark red or maroon. I typically find in a lot of uh, pens or nibs, it writes more of a really dark red to a black. Uh, and it does in this pen, but I do like it. The next pen here inked up is the Visconti Medici Il Magnifico in the red marble. So we'll do an ink swatch. And you'll see here this writes really, really nicely. Um, again, it's a 23 cap palladium nib from Visconti. And I just love these nibs. So this is uh, the Visconti uh medici il magnifico and it is in the red marble i'm just abbreviating so i didn't put medici there and it is a medium 23 cap palladium nib and then the ink in here is a uh, pelican or pelican edelstein And it is a Star Ruby, which, although it's not a red ink, I, I do like how it writes in this pen. Uh, it writes very smooth, and I just enjoy writing with it. 
The next pen inked up is the Visconti Medici Il Magnifico in the Lapis Lazuli. So again, we'll do uh, an ink swatch here. And this was uh, an ink that took a long time to find uh, this perfect color ink, and I do love it. So this is the Visconti Medici Il Magnifico. And it is the Lapis Lazuli. And it is a medium, but it's the newer 18 cat gold nibs from Visconti. And then uh, the ink in here is um, Pilot Iroshizuku Aji Say, which is a beautiful ink. Uh, and an ink that I, I love. It's a violety blue ink, just a beautiful shade of, of blue. The next pen inked up is the Classic Pens LB5 in the KN. So we will do another ink swatch. Now this is a much finer nib. It still writes quite wet, which I like. But uh, sailor nibs, typically because they're Asian, do write slightly more finer than a Western nib. So this is the Classic Pens lb5 and it is the kn uh, it's a medium so it writes a little bit more like a western fine or a western medium to fine uh, it's a 21 cat gold nib and then the ink in here is mont blanc corn poppy red which is a beautiful red ink still have four bottles of it by the way well, three and a half maybe. Uh, but yes, it, it's a beautiful ink. And uh, an ink that I love. And it is now out of uh, production. The next pen here is the Anoto Magna Classic. So we'll do an ink swatch here. Now, strangely enough, this is a medium nib. But it writes a little bit more like a broad the reason being is that I bought this pen secondhand. The previous owner had actually uh, had the nib ground to a crisp italic, which essentially removed uh, all of the underside tipping there, almost, uh, of that pen. Uh, I have since uh, rounded it off to become more of a stub-like, uh, but there's nothing I can do about the flat spotting of that tipping, unfortunately, because there's very little there. Uh, but at least it now writes much better than it did. So this is an Anoto Magna Classic in Chased Jade or Green. Um, and it is a medium and it's an 18 cat gold nib. Uh, and the ink uh, in here is uh, Diamine. And it's meadow. Now, strangely enough, I do wonder. Uh, obviously, when you buy a pen and you don't like how it writes or you don't like the nib, then you've got two options. You can either return it. Uh, there might be a, a restocking fee. You could regrind the nib yourself, or you could take it to a nib specialist. Now, not all nib specialists are nib specialists. There are a lot of people out there that have just come into doing nib grinds and don't do a very good job. I wonder if that was one of these that, that did that pen. I do not know, unfortunately. Um, but uh, even then, uh, they sold the pen after they had that nib ground. So clearly, they didn't like it to start with. They got a grind done on it, and they didn't like it, and then they sold it. So uh, it, it's a shame. Um, but at least I guess at least they tried to like the pen and the nib. The next pen here is an Opus 88 Calaro Demonstrator, and uh, this has a twist to it. And I'm going to show you this here. So uh, this is a, a nib that I ground myself a number of years ago. Uh, I wanted some... I actually have uh, one Sailor Naganata Togi nib in my collection, uh, but I wanted 
uh, a, a different uh, nib um, ground uh, into an architect. So I ground a number of architect nibs. So uh, this is the Opus 88 Calaro demonstrator. And uh, it was abroad, uh, and uh, it, it's now an architect. Uh, and it is a still uh, Yovo nib. Now, uh, the ink in here is actually uh, diamine, and it's uh, skull uh, and roses. Now, I'm going to actually show you something here. So, let me um, let me show you here. So, normally uh, a pen will have. Um, uh, if it's a broad nib or a stub nib, it will have wide verticals and uh, also maybe wide um, horizontals. And if it was a stub, it would be wide verticals and narrow uh, horizontals. So it, this has narrow verticals, but much wider uh, horizontals there. Now, you could potentially do that but it is a, a very dry writer uh, but you can see there that that is an architect grind nib and one that I ground myself and I do like um, and I may actually I, I was in the process of grinding all of my uh, broad uh, Yovo nibs uh, on the Opus 88 so I've got three of them uh, to a uh, architect, but I just I stopped at two because I thought I might still just want one as a normal one. The next pen here inked up is a Yarda lead, and this is the Grand Victorian. So we'll do an ink swatch, and this is a much much finer nib. It is actually a fine nib, strangely enough. And this is the uh, Yard O Lead Grand Victorian. And it is a fine and it is an 18 cat gold nib. And then the ink in here is uh, Noodler's Habanero. Which I honestly think I, I like in this pen a lot. Uh, it's not a dry writing pen. Uh, it's not a super wet writing pen. But I just find that that ink flows quite nicely. The next pen here, again, uh, this is the last pen uh, this week, is a Yarda Lead and it's a Grand uh, and it's the uh, Barley. So we'll do an ink swatch here. And again, I have to say, I, I think this is probably the perfect ink for this uh, pen. And uh, this is a Yard O Lead Grant, and it's the Barley. And it is a medium 18 cat gold nib. And then the ink in here is Bora and Klinger. And it is a uh, Verdura, which uh, strange enough is what I had the U, uh, Visconti Uffizi uh, inked up with earlier. So I think let's take a look at these uh, pens inked up one more time. We have a Visconti Brunelleschi in a medium 23 cap palladium nib inked up with diamine terracotta. We have a Visconti Uffizi. In a broad 18 carat gold nib inked up with raw and clinger verdure. We have a Visconti Millionaire in a medium 23 carat palladium nib inked up with raw and clinger alt bordeaux, which actually, once it's dry, does look a little bit more of a, I want to say, a, a very dark purple. Uh, we have a Visconti Medici Il Magnifico in the red marble in a medium 23 carat palladium nib inked up with Pelican Edelstein Star Ruby. We have a Visconti Medici Il Magnifico in the Lapis Lazuli in a medium 18 carat gold nib inked up with Pilot Roshizuku Aji Se. 
we have a Classic Pens LB5KN in a medium 21 cap gold nib, inked up with Mont Blanc Corn Poppy Red. We have an Anoto Magna Classic Chased Green in a medium 18 cap gold nib, inked up with Diamine Meadow. We have a Opus 88 Calaro Demonstrator in a broad architect ground steel nib, uh, Yovo nib, uh, inked up with Diamine Skull and Roses, and you can see the difference here. Uh, on how the architect nib writes. We have a Yardo led Grand Victorian in a fine 18 count gold nib inked up with Noodler's Habanero. And then last but not least, we have another Yardo led Grand Barley inked up with uh, a medium 18 count gold nib inked up with Roar and Klinger Verdura. So there you have it. That's my current ink pens for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye-bye.